Dobri večer, vesoko považanje, pa nje in panove. Ukrajinski nacionalni muzej prezentuje vam čarivni večer, ta vesto kot kartin Mefologija mojeji batkivštine. Ščero srdečno vitajmo naša mestja Oleksija Kovalenka. Pane Oleksij, debej. Je, ki je nešto davno bo v Čikago in zaproponoval ideju sjohodnišnjo večera. Promestecki tvore, jih povjazanja z ukrajinskojo mifologijo, popravadjati vas bohenja muzejnoje kulturi, kurator Marija Klemčak, bohenja mestectva Marta Kozbur in bohenja prirode Lida Tkačuk. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Ukrainian National Museum Board of Directors, we welcome you to our spring evening Mythology of My Homeland. We are honored to receive our visiting artist, Ukrainian-born Oleksiy Kovalenko from Seattle, Washington. You will hear legends, cultural beliefs, meet deities, and become acquainted with Oleksiy Kovalenko's works. His striking paintings will come alive, conveying cultural and spiritual beliefs, and you might hear sounds of thunder, rain, feel healing forces of water, or learn the magical powers of flowers. He aims to convey the mystery of human psyche, as a philosopher, understanding the genesis of our culture through the interpretation of traditional values of our rich heritage. Oleksiy Kovalenko was born in Kyiv in 1946 to a highly educated, prosperous, and well-recognized family. Yet his family's life and his road to recognition were not easy because of the political situation in Ukraine. Oleksiy was the grandson of Gregory Selbeder, professor of Slavic studies at the Kyiv University. Gregory was then considered the enemy of the people, a non-communist, but a firm Ukrainian for which he was sentenced for 25 years in the Gulag. However, Oleksiy completed his medical studies in Kyiv, worked at the Institute of Zoology, continued his art studies, and received his degree from the Kyiv Art Institute. Later found work at Dovzhenko's Theater. While working at the Department of Paleontology, he would go to many archaeological expeditions, making sketches of excavations of broken pottery from the ancient Tripilian culture and bones of unknown animals. At this point, a sad spirit enveloped him, reminding him of the descendants of Cossacks who lost their national consciousness, the spiritual impoverishment of Ukraine, even the fact that all these excavated valuable archaeological treasures were sold for pennies. This is when he decided to aim for a specific path of art. He delves even deeper, reuniting his ancestors through careful study and readings of numerous books. He delves into literature, Sorry. He seeks information, folkloric stories to understand and unite with his ancestors to artistically portray mystic gods and elements of Ukrainian mythology. Throughout his life, Oleksiy says he continues to realize how important it is to live in harmony with the laws of spirit and conduct parallels with his ancestors. Ultimately, each artist paves his own way to love God. To better understand Ukrainian mythology, our goddess of museum culture, Maria Klimchak, will remind us of our pagan heritage and the myths that told tales of supernatural creatures or heroes with their cultural deeds. Goddess of Ukrainian art, Marta Kosbur, will remind you of the symbolism on Ukrainian Easter eggs, and I will inform you about the magical powers of flowers and their colors. Знаєте, справді, сьогодні, я думаю, цікавий повинен би бути вечір, і ми сподіваємося, що ми разом з вами його зробимо цікавим. Тому що це вечір української мітології. А так як ми з дитинства з вами привчені до казки, і ту казку стараємося нести через ціле наше життя, я і почну сьогодні нашу зустріч із казки. Отож, ми сьогодні знаходимося в казковому світі. І за мною цей образ Сварога. І я хочу розказати вам, власне, казку про Сварога. Хто це такий був? Сварог спік першу хлібину, запашну і золоту, як сонце, 
і виніс її людям, і дав кожному по скипці. І вкусили люди те є диво, і силу відчули в собі неймовірну, і збагнули, що приніс госсваро велике щастя, і міць, і здоров'я, і довголіття. The exciting panache and colors of flowers has drawn and enthralled roughly all people in the world for centuries. Flowers include some kind of magical appeal, and for ages, mystic gods, mermaids, nymphs, and women embellished their surroundings, cooked or medicinally treated with flowers and adorned bodies and clothing. They've always been the perfect way to disclose one's intrinsic emotions, wishes, and gratitudes. Flowers can convey happiness, sadness, overflowing love, grief, or sympathy. We use them often without knowing the meaning behind them. Let us look at the flowers as they were depicted in Ukrainian mythology. As a wreath of periwinkle symbolized purity, innocence, and virginity, and still today, Ukrainian brides wear such a wreath during the wedding ceremony. So the Gelder Rose, Kalina, symbolized the spiritual life of women, beauty, love, marriage, joy, and grief. Kalina is tied to the birth of the universe of the goddess Lada. Wreaths of wildflowers were not only women's passion, they were a symbol of Mother Earth, their eternal life-giving force and external imagery of maiden beauty. I will focus on the symbolism of the glyphs of the ancient Slavs, especially as they pertain to the Pisimka. In primitive society, the families and tribes living on the territory of Ukraine used signs and symbols that reflect their beliefs and certain features of life and activity. Initially, they were simple images, crosses, diamonds, squares, circles, and other shapes. There were pictures of heavenly bodies, sun, moon, and stars, animals, mammoth, deer, wolves, dogs, and lions, birds, the eagle and the raven, cattle, bulls, horses, sheep, goats, and pigs, and the gods of pagan belief. Together with embroidered rushnike, Eggs are one of the oldest branches of our national crafts. We first encounter eggs made in the Trapillion culture. The, ele the elements used by our ancestors in decorative ornamentation are still used today. The core of all these decorative patterns were not ornaments at all, but magic spells and symbols that guarded against evil and bad forces. One of the most common elements in Pisanka ornamentation is the image of the sun and different solar signs. The cult of the sun was perhaps the most important to our ancestors. The symbols of the solar system include the circle of the sun. It represents completeness, continuity, and the cyclical nature of the universe. The pre-Christian interpretation denoted the sun as the center of the universe, the giver of fertility, the victory over evil and darkness. The circle containing a dot is said to represent the moment when the earth receives the light of the sun and comes to life in the spring. In the Christian tradition, the circle may be associated with God because of its perfection and its ability to unite. A circle enclosing the cross represents the millennium, the center and the four directions of the universe. The plus sign, or the intersecting two perpendicular lines, is a symbol of happiness, blessings and good fortune, and goodwill. This symbol is often seen with rounded corners in the form of the windmill or Maltese cross. The hooks are sometimes stylized to form leaves. 